Okay, we're going to work through section 5.6 of your Intermediate Algebra book. This starts on page 206. The topic is complex numbers. So we're going to talk about imaginary number. Uh, the little letter i traditionally stands for the imaginary number. i squared equals negative 1. So that means that i equals the square root of negative 1. In previous lessons we talked about um, the square root of a negative number is not a real number. This is not a real number. This is why we call it imaginary. So this, this entire section is about imaginary numbers. So starting with example 1, letter A, what is the square root of negative 36? These are easy to simplify, uh, the perfect squares because we know the multiplication rule. Negative 36 is really negative 1 times 36. So the square root of negative 36 is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 30, uh, square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of negative 1 is i. So this turns into 6i. For letter b, with the square root of negative 20. Again, we're going to se separate this into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 20. And 20 is not a perfect square, but it is 4 times 5. So this square root of 4 will come to the outside as a 2. This square root of negative 1 makes an i. So this becomes 2i and that 5 is left underneath because it doesn't want to simplify. That's an ugly 5. There we go. That wasn't much better. So simplifying, this square root of negative 1 becomes an i when we bring it to the outside. The square root of negative 1 equals i. This 4 becomes this 2 out here. And this 5 is not a perfect square, so it has to stay in. All right, so letter C the square root of negative 7. And again, we're going to separate this into the square root of negative 1. This is what we always do when we have a negative radicand. We take that negative 1 out as the first step, and then we simplify whatever's left. This square root of negative 1 is going to give us an i. This square root of 7 does not simplify. So we're going to have an i on the outside times the square root of 7. That's it for example 1. All right, so moving on to example 2, which is on page 207. There's a rule actually at the bottom of page 206 that says you cannot multiply radicands when they are negative. So when you're simplifying a multiplication that involves negative radicands, like example A, you have to simplify out the negative 1 first. So when we look at the square root of negative 2. The 2 part doesn't simplify. The negative part brings an i to the outside. So this is i times the square root of 2. Same thing with the square root of negative 5. The negative 1 comes to the outside. The 5 has to stay on the inside. Uh, your book shows this with parentheses like this to, to indicate that this is a multiplication. So when we multiply, Remember, we multiply the, the coefficients first, which in this case is i. So this is going to be i times i on the outside, which gives us i squared. And then under the radical, the radicands 2 times 5 gives us 10. Um, when you do this with i, you have to remember to always simplify i squared. i squared, we talked about this right before example 1. i squared equals negative 1. So you have to simplify that to be a negative 1 times the square root of 10. 
So I squared always simplifies to make negative 1. This 10 doesn't simplify, so it has to stay in. So let's try letter B. The square root of negative 3 times the square root of negative 6. And again, we're going to bring those, those i's out. So we're going to have i times the square root of 3 times i times the square root of 6. So just to review, this negative brings an i out. This 3 cannot simplify. So a negative bring an i out. The 6 does not simplify. And now we multiply these. The coefficients, when you multiply them together, give you i squared. And then the radicand gives you the square root of 18. Now this does simplify, this square root of 18, but this i squared is also going to turn into a negative 1. So we're going to simplify these. So we have a negative 1 on the outside. The 18 is 9 times 2. So that 9 brings a 3 to the outside. The square root of 9 is 3. So we have a 3 coming to the outside. We have a negative 1 also coming to the outside. So that makes negative 3 on the outside, square root of 2 left on the inside. So the 3 coming from the square root of 9, the i squared turns into the negative 1. That makes negative 3 when we multiply them together. The 2 has to stay in. Letter C says the square root of negative 7 times the square root of negative 7. When we simplify these, by taking the negative out, we get i times the square root of 7 times i square root of 7. When we multiply them together, i squared on the outside, square root of 49 on the inside, which of course will simplify to make 7. So this makes a negative 1, and this makes a 7. Together, when we multiply those, we get negative 7. All right, we're up to example 3 on page 207. Letter A says the square root of negative 4 over the square root of negative 16. And we're going to use the same rule for division that we use for multiplication. We don't divide with negative radicands. This negative has to come out first. So we're going to simplify these. Um, the negative, of course, is going to bring out an i. The square root of 4 brings out a 2. So this becomes 2i. In the denominator, the 16 simplifies to 4. The square root of 16 is 4. This negative sign brings an i out, so we end up with 4i. And now we can reduce. The i is reduced just like a variable would. i over i reduces to make 1. 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half. Letter b says the square root of negative 45 over the square root of negative 80. That 45 is actually negative 1 times 9 times 5. The negative 1 is going to give us our i. The 9 is going to give us a 3. The square root of 9 is 3. So these turn into 3i times the square root of 5. In the denominator, we're going to have square root of negative 1 from that 80, and that's going to be times 16 times 5. So this square root of 16 is going to bring us a 4, this is going to bring us an i, and this 5 is going to have to stay under. So we're going to have 4i squared of 5. These square roots of 5 cancel, these i's cancel, this simplifies to make 3 over 4. Letter C says, oops, come on. The square root of negative 3 over the square root of negative 7. <laughs> 
All right, so this is going to simplify to make i times the square root of 3 because the 3 doesn't simplify, but the negative 1 gives you an i. Same thing here with the 7. The 7 doesn't simplify, but the negative 1 gives you an i. When you do that, you can then reduce those i's, and they're gone. The square root of 3 over the square root of 7 is not rationalized, so we have to get rid of the square root of 7, and we do that by multiplying it times itself, and that gives us the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which is 7 in the denominator. The square root of 3 times the square root of 7 is square root of 21. Okay, on page 207, toward the bottom, we start talking about higher powers of i, which is more than squares. Okay, um, whenever you have a higher power of i, anything more than one power, you have to simplify it. And there are only four choices uh, when you simplify higher powers of i. Either it equals i, it equals negative i, it equals 1, or negative 1. Those are the only four choices. If you have the intermediate algebra book on the bottom of page 207, there's a chart. Uh, you don't have to memorize the chart. Instead, I'm going to teach you a method to actually figure out what uh, your higher power simplifies to. And we're just going to start with something simple like i cubed. Okay? Everything is about i squared because we know i squared equals negative 1. So if you take your i cubed and you can write it in terms of i squared, you can get some negative 1's out of there. But this is not equal. i cubed is not equal to i squared. It's equal to i squared times i. That would be i cubed. Um, i squared is negative 1, so we can replace this with a negative 1. Multiply that times i, we get negative I. So i cubed is equal to negative i. All right, we're going to look at example 4 on the top of page 208. It's going to simplify some higher powers of i. The first one is example a, i to the 11 power. And like I said before, you want to write these in terms of i cubed. I'm sorry, i squared. So how do we write this as i squared? If you remember the exponent rules, these two exponents need to multiply to make this. But 11 is not divisible by 2. Instead, we can make it i to the 10. This is 5 times 2 is 10, and then we have the extra i off to the side, and that gives you 11. Um, the idea here is that these two numbers, these two exponents, multiply to make an even number. So if you start with an odd exponent, you make them one less, and then the one extra i will go out here to the side. If this was a 10 here, no big deal. We would only need this part, and we wouldn't need this extra. But since this is 11, we first make it 10 by multiplying. This is the, the exponent rule for multiply, and then we have an extra i. So we know i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 1 to the fifth power. Negative 1 to the fifth power is negative 1, so this is negative 1 times i, or negative i. All right, letter b, i to the 36. And we're going to do this thing with i squared again. We're going to put an exponent out here that when I multiply these, they make 36. This is an even number now, so the 2 times something makes 36, and that would be 2 times 18. So i squared is negative 1. So this is negative 1 to the 18th power, which is positive 1. Letter C. Let's move this up. Letter C says i to the 72. So again, 
it's all about I squared. Can I put a number out here that when I multiply these together, they make 72? Since 72 is an even number, then it, that's going to be 36. So that multiplies, simplifies to make negative 1 to the 36 power, which is positive 1. Letter D says I to the negative 16 power. All right, if you remember your exponent rules, a negative exponent means the reciprocal. So we're going to start with that first. This is going to be the reciprocal of I, which is 1 over I to the 16th power. And then we're going to simplify that I to the 16th. I squared to the 8th power. These multiply to make the 16. By putting it in the denominator, we've taken care of the negative. So that simplifies to make 1 over negative 1 to the 8th power. Negative 1 to the 8th power is 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. 